Hi everybody, it's Kelly. Um, I hope everybody's having a really good day. Uh, I wanted to do a small project share uh, just for a little while because I've got something big planned and I'm trying to figure out how to get it all lined out so that it won't be boring and it won't you know take forever. So this is my small um, project share. You know how sometimes you'll get uh, little uh, what are they called? Paper clips. And they've got the little designs on them. And then you get, well, I found these. Okay, these were at the Dollar Tree. There's 36 of them in here. Okay, 36. And I figured I'd show you what I do with mine. Since buying those little clips are so expensive, you know, how can you beat a dollar for 36 when you can make your own, right? Okay. So let's take out one card and we'll set the others aside for now. Now you can do them a bunch of different ways. Okay, You can leave them the plain wood and then just lightly wipe over it with uh, glue and then pour glitter on it. Okay, So I'll give you, I can use the fat side this time. Okay, so oh! There we go. Alrighty, so we're gonna we're gonna glue this just the one side. Okay, and we'll put that back in here. And I will get my glitters out. Not the glue. Not the glitter glue. Now I don't have a very big selection of glitters. This is all my wash or my um, embossing powders my glitter and my glitter nail polish and I have a couple things of sequins so I don't have a whole lot of glitter and I think this is even zing embossing powder wow okay so well let's use let's use some mica flakes you can get these really finely ground they're LA shadows at the Dollar General okay and they're a buck a piece and I've got a couple colors but Oh no, I don't guess I have any glitter. I thought I did. I have glitter glue, but that kind of defeats the purpose. Or, actually, I'm probably doing it the wrong way, but look. Look how pretty that is. See how shimmery? I hope you can see that. Might make it better. Okay, well, we're going to... Actually, I'm going to put some in my hand. You can also take this same eyeshadow and mix it with um, some alcohol and get you some of your own shimmer mists. Put it in a spray bottle. Um, okay, then I'll use the little brush. Let's see if we can do this. I don't normally do it this difficult. All right, well. It's not going to turn out completely right, I guess. It's too fine. But what we can do is we can spread it around with the glue. And when the glue dries, that sparkle shimmer will be in there. I'll get some off the table where I spilled it. Okay, and then we can. Okay. Anyways, that's one way, and it's kind of, you know, a cheap, quickie way. Um, I don't do mine that way, but some people might. It's just an idea. Okay. Others might actually take, depending on, you know, what they're using. Let's get the glue back. Okay. So we'll take this one, and they decorate it with washi tape. So we'll put a little bit here and a little bit on this side. Because you know washi tape will never stay without help. So you can make it go all the way down if you want. There you go. Let that dry before you trim off the rest. 
And then if you wanted, you could take a little silver brad or a button or something to that effect and tack it or glue it onto the end right here with some hot glue. I don't even know. Oh, you know what? This one looks good. I've got a button. It's a heart it's a heart shaped button. It's got flowers on it. That might be cute right there. You know, so we'll let this one dry. But most of the time when I make mine, I do it the, the easy way. Okay. So I'm going to grab some colors. Let's see. I want to do some purple ones. I did pink and glitter last time, which I'll have to show you guys sometimes. I did those mini clips, those really little ones. Okay. This box I'm using as my palette was a thank you card box holder. And I just gessoed it. Not sure, but it looks like it'd make a good shadow box for something. So I figured, well, might as well start giving it some color. And look how pretty that is. I usually do the sides and the end. But I usually only do one side unless it's going on a project that both sides will be, you know. Here we go. Oops, I forgot one. Forgot this side. And that end. And if you don't want them sticking together, um, as they're drying, you know, because I got paint right there. Uh, let me get that out of there. Okay. Then just open it up and put it on a card or something. Put it back on this card. Actually, I probably could have just painted it on the card and it would have been a lot easier. But there we go. Now I got a little fingerprint in it, so I'll have to fix that. Alright, but look how pretty that purple, that metallic purple is. I really hope you guys can see that color, because that is just beautiful. Okay, so I'm going to do a couple more with the purple. Because we got a Mardi Gras theme coming up in Pink Poodle. Wait a minute. Oh well. I'll just have to print or paint over my fingerprint again. Um, yep, we got to make five uh, things relating to Mardi Gras and send them out. And I'm just starting on some of the items because the colors of Mardi Gras are purple, gold, and green. Now, if you don't know the story of Mardi Gras, um, there's a lot of different views, but the purple is for royalty, like when they hold the royal court. And they choose the king and queen. Uh, the gold is for uh, future and luck, I think. No, that's prosperity. And the green is for uh, luck. So, there we go. Yep, I have to paint my... But yeah, Mardi Gras came... Oh, uh, in fact, hold on, let me see. I've been doing some Mardi Gras graphics. I got my new printer in the mail. Yay! Okay, and when I was doing my graphics, I also thought I would um, print out the history of Mardi Gras. So while I'm doing this, I can kind of read it to you and maybe you'll learn something. I, I know I did. Duh, I was going to do it again. Okay. So this starts out, it says, Though Mardi Gras, or Fat Tuesday, celebrations are traditionally dated back to medieval Europe, their roots are believed to go all the way back to ancient pagan festivals such as Saturnalia or Lupercalia. Today, the most famous Mardi Gras celebrations are held in New Orleans, Louisiana, which traces its own heritage to campfire revelries held by French explorers back in 1699. 
So it's kind of been around a while. And if you if you're able to go, <clears throat> you know, to Mardi Gras, um, they celebrate it all over Louisiana. To be honest, um, I know before Hurricane Katrina, um, trying to celebrate Mardi Gras in New Orleans was, you know, enter at your own risk because the crime was so bad, the police corruption was so bad. And uh, so my friends and I had decided, and this was just before Katrina, we were going to do a group, a group thing. And we were all going to fly in from all over, somewhere in Georgia. Some I was in, no, I was here in Missouri. Uh, my best friend Ivana was in um, Michigan at the time. Uh, our other friends were in Michigan, uh, people from Georgia. Anyways, we were all going to meet in Baton Rouge and do, we were going to celebrate Mardi Gras in Baton Rouge, which is about an hour west, if I believe, um, if I'm correct anyway, of New Orleans. And we had our hotel um, reserved everything a year in advance because you really have to if you want to go to Mardi Gras. You have to be prepared a year or more in advance. And even us going to Baton Rouge and not just straight up um, New Orleans is uh, was still a year's wait. So I had uh, rented us or reserved us. There was four rooms with two beds per room. So we were all going to double up. And I made these Mardi Gras welcome packets to send out to everybody in the group that was going. And it told the history of, you know, the king cake, why they why they make the king cake and why they hide the little plastic baby inside. And whoever gets it is supposed to host the next year's king cake party. Um, I don't know how that one started. Maybe, let me see if they've got the story about that in there. Yep, the king cake. It says, the story behind one of Mardi Gras' most popular foods dates back to the Middle Ages. Um, that's when people began celebrating the tradition of the three kings who brought the gifts to the baby Jesus on Twelfth Night, also known as Epiphany. Hey PJ, if you're watching it, Mardi Gras is talking about you. Uh, let's see. Okay, along with giving special gifts to the children, the custom arose to eat a special kind of cake for the occasion. King cakes are now consumed throughout the season, beginning on Twelfth Night, which is January 6th. It's, uh, I believe, the twelfth day after Christmas is what that means. And ending on Mardi Gras, which is um, ah, Fat Tuesday, and I forget when Fat Tuesday happens. Uh, but along, okay, originally it was just a simple ring of dough. The king cake took different forms over the year. Today... The pastry is braided. It's like a Danish braided pastry. And then it's sprinkled with uh, different colored sugars in the Mardi Gras colors. So you'd have um, pink, uh, or not pink, you'd have purple uh, sugar, you'd have gold sugar, and you'd have um, green sugar. And hold on, I know I've got a picture of that and I'll show it to you. Looks really cool. Uh, okay, let's put this here. I'm going to do one more, and then we'll move on. Okay, let me see real quick. Oh, I may not have printed it out. Please tell me I printed. There it is. Okay. See that picture right there? Okay, that's a king cake. They actually just made that into a bunt cake, but there's all different ways they do it. They do it like monkey bread. They do it like braided Danish pastries. They do it like a bread braid. Um, that one, to me, in my honest opinion, is easiest to make because it's a bunt pan. <laughs> um, the other braided stuff is, you know, whatever. But, yeah, so the traditions go go back a little ways, but 
let's see, according to, to a tradition, let's see, according to a tradition launched in the 1940s by Donald Entringer, who owned one of New Orleans' largest commercial bakeries, um, a tiny baby figurine meant to represent Jesus <clears throat> was baked into each king cake. The baby is usually made of plastic, but in past years it was sometimes porcelain or even gold. Um, according to custom, whoever gets the baby in his or her slice must buy the cake or buy the next cake or host the next party. Now they said they're saying something about Zulu coconuts. But I have no idea what that, what that uh, meant because I've never heard of anything about a Zulu coconut regarding Mardi Gras. So let me see if they say something about it. But they would have already. Oh, Zulu coconuts. There we are. So you know how everybody throws the, the beads and women lift their shirts and say, give me some beads, mister, and they show their, their tatas or boobies or whatever you want to call them, um, and they're supposed to throw them uh, extra beads because they showed them their no-nos. Um, apparently, some of the... Uh, some of the things they used to toss around 1909 and it was from the oldest traditionally African-American cruise. Zulu held its first parade in 1909. The very next year as the historical record shows they began tossing coconuts to members of the crowd. Well originally you know they were painted. No originally the coconuts were left in their natural brown state. Okay, but then as the years went by, they started painting them and decorating them with glitter. Glitter. Nowadays, they're handed into the crowd rather than thrown to avoid injuries and lawsuits. Could you imagine being in a parade and getting knocked upside the head with a coconut and not know where the heck it came from? Oh, that would make me mad. That would totally... Toast my cookies, boy. So, yeah, I can see how, you know, they would want to change that uh, tradition to handing out the coconuts as opposed to uh, throwing them. Or could you imagine a child getting hit? Oh, man, because the adult missed the catch? Or, yeah, it's a good idea they started handing them out. Um, let's see, the bead throwing, the true meaning of the famous Mardi Gras beads, begins with their traditional colors, okay? So that's the purple stood for justice, green stood for faith, and gold stood for power. Okay, so I was wrong earlier. The idea was to toss the beads to those in the crowd who exhibited these traits. The people who caught them were said to get good luck for the coming year. Though the beads were originally glass, Nowadays, they're made of plastic and are one of the most popular Mardi Gras traditions. So that was pretty, pretty interesting. So now all I'm doing is I'm just kind of spreading this paint out to the background what's left. Okay. And that gets rid of most of the paint on my brush. I still got to wash it. Uh, flambeaux, the blazing torches, and when they spit, pour alcohol in their mouth and spit it out, it looks like they're breathing fire. Um, those were honestly back then uh, used for lights because you know flambeau is French for torch, and they date back through. There we go. They date back through a custom established by the, an ori no, the original Mardi Gras crew, Comus. In mid-19th century, the torches were necessary due to lack of sufficient street lighting. The original flambeau carriers were slaves and free men of color. 
and their torches were probably made with shredded rope soaked in pitch and set ablaze. Crowds lining the parade route would toss coins to the flambeau carriers, a tradition that still continues today. Over the years, however, Mardi Gras flambeaus have evolved into a kind of a performance art as the robe-wearing carriers twirl and dance with their torches, now much lighter and fueled by butane or kerosene. So, that's a good thing. Now, well, let's see, what color do we want to do these? Actually, I think I'm going to use, like, a champagne. I'm going to put a little bit in there. Apparently, I'm going to leave them on the clip. Taking them off was not such a good idea. Okay, but this time, see how it's not quite covering everything. But that's okay. Because this time, we're going to add something. Okay. And you can get as detailed and as, you know, involved as you want in, um, in decorating these. I've seen some that were so exquisite, they looked like works of art by themselves. It's like, who? Why would you want to give that away? That is so pretty. Just hang it up on your curtain rod or something, leave it there, clip a flower to it. So, oh, I had to cut all my nails off and cut them down, actually. They were getting too long for me to do anything. I couldn't even type on the t uh, computer on my, on my laptop. So, I ended up just cutting them all off and taking that nail polish that I had on off because that was kind of a pain in the butt. It was like it was nail polish, but it had a metal flake in it that didn't want to come off with the nail polish remover. In fact, I still have some, some of these still have some glitter on. I don't know if you can see it. And then they changed my fingers co different colors, my fingernails. So now I'm going to have to bleach them uh, with nail bleach, not, not regular household bleach. That, that'll tear up your cuticles. <sighs> But, now isn't that silver? It, uh, actually, it's not silver. It's called champagne. And I know I'll have to do the sides because I'm not getting all of them. But, you know, for all intents and purposes, there we go. All right. So, let's just kind of spread this all, all around as well. Get some color on the inside of this box. And we'll wash the paintbrush. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is, is that glitter? No, that's glitter glue. Um, okay, I have these two nail polishes that are so cool. But you can't tell the difference between the pink and the purple when they're on. The pink actually just looks pink. But it looks so cool if you paint it on a black die cut. I'll have to show you. I'll have to grab one to just show you. Because when it dries, it is phenomenal. In fact, one of my uh, Happy Mails that I just sent out had um, a bunch of... Uh, well, it had a big snowflake die that I had painted. It was black snowflake die, actually. And uh, I had painted it. with or I covered it with this stuff so I got this on clearance at Walmart for a buck and I thought ooh I'll never wear it but it might look good on some crafts right <laughs> that's it that's the only thing that goes on my mind anymore when I'm in this store like I'll be in the thrift store and I'll see something and I'll like oh so and so needs that for her Asian journal or I remember her talk somebody else talking about you know something else and I see something and I'll grab it and send it off and it's just it's funny you know my dad's like okay who are you buying this for now and sometimes I have to say well sometimes it's just for me dad 
He's laying down tonight. He went to bed early. I'm not sure if it's because he's just not feeling good or if he's just really tired. He does Tai Chi twice a week. Um, I found out I did not have to have surgery on my knee, which was a praise the Lord blessing, but I still have a torn ACL and two ripped, uh, two rips or two tears in one of the meniscus um, tendons, ligaments, whichever they are. Okay, now I'm going to do the purple and I want to show you the difference. At least it didn't show up different on the black. Oh, now it's going to prove me a liar. Oh, that's pretty. See how pretty that is? You know, and you can use these to clip little extra graphics in your junk journals or if you're sending stuff to somebody and you want to add, you know, add something to it but you really don't have the room or can't figure out how you want to add it. Um, just clip it to the inside cover, one of the inside pages, and, uh, you know, that way you'll be able to incorporate it. Like I said, this has only taken me, I've only been doing this for about 26 minutes, okay? And we've already shown one, two, three, four different, four different techniques, right? So I'll do some more purple. I wish they'd had green and gold, because then I'd have done some in those colors, and that would have been cool. There we go. I think I'm going to do the last two in pink. It's called Hard Candy, um, and it was at Walmart. So that in there and I'll do the last two in pink. I kind of like the pink ones too. But yeah, getting back to Mardi Gras it's pretty much a celebration of life. Now there's a lot of people who attribute you know bad connotations to it and there are some you know there are witches down down in down in that area. Um, they do practice. Uh, oh, I call it voodoo. Um, there's another word they use. Dad knows it, and I forgot what he said it was. What they call it. Um, they also practice uh, Santeria. I think that's what it's called. Um, And that's that for them. So now my purple's dry, but these aren't. So instead of, you know, doing anything, I'm going to get some Venetian gold. It's some, my one of my brand new ones I got from this, like I said, this one company. I'll have to look it up again. Um, I got like eight tubes of um, uh, metallic. Uh, all different kinds, and it ran me maybe, uh, maybe a buck a piece, if that. But I did have to pay shipping, so but not it wasn't very much. Okay, so since we're gonna try and do Mardi Gras, let's go with the purple. We'll do some gold. See how that works. <clears throat> I should have probably done the green first. I will do the back with green and gold. Hey, there we go. Okay. So I'm not going to get too fluffy about it. I'm just making little gold lines. I'm just using the end of my my paintbrush. Well, 
could be X's, could be not. I don't know. And then some people, you know, they just put ribbons on them and let it go. Let it go. Can't hold it back anymore. Oh, my granddaughters played that movie over and over and over again. There. Those are looking a little Mardi Gras, kind of Harlequin y. Ah, I'm already here. Whoops, too much. Too much, too much, too much, too much, too much. Okay, so there's part of my Mardi Gras decorations. Uh, let's take some of this, and we'll just since I have some left, I'm just kind of dot the inside. I'll do this side too. I don't know what I'm going to end up doing with it, but. If it's real pretty, I might just leave it as a little, you know, like catch-all or something on my dresser. But I don't think so. I'm thinking, I like the idea of doing a, like a woodland nighttime theme with maybe some deer and a tree or something. I don't know. Maybe a sunset in the background. That would be pretty, I think. There we go. See, used up all the paint. I'm like, wash my paintbrush off. Let's see how. Oh, these are dry already. Oh, no, not all of them. Okay. Well, while those are drying, I'm going to bring this, this one back that I didn't think turned out very good. The one that I did with the glitter and the eyeshadow okay or the glue in the eyeshadow but what I am gonna do is find my green so here we go now this is just studio G kinda like stickles um, I like it because they're a lot less expensive and just glitter the heck out of them usually when I do mine um, I'll have to show you uh, I do little pink ones with silver glitter because I have the way I put I hang up my happy mail the things that people make me and send me I get these like two to three inch wide velvet ribbon I hang it vertically on the wall after pinning a really thin or gluing a really thin pink ribbon straight down the middle and uh, there we go and then I take the little clips and I clip them to the sides and everything that I get like my ATC's tags cards um, it, you know just all the little things that people send me um, so that way I can display them I have them on the back of my bedroom door so every time my bedroom door is closed um, I get to look at them and I'm I feel so lucky and so blessed when I do look at all of them because then I think you know what somebody was thinking about me when they made that and that's a very humbling feeling it really is okay so what should we do with this one it looks pretty but it's not done yet 
Let's see if we have something in here we can use. Um, that won't work. I need it gold. That one will work. Okay. I'm going to give you a little hint. Sometimes I just need the embellishment and I don't want I don't want the the brad. So I'll either leave it like that or oh tell me I pushed them all the way over here. I did. Give me one second and I can grab them. Ta-da. Or I just cut them off if I can. <laughs> These are some really, really cheap wire cutters. I need to get me a new set. Well, these are dads, so <clears throat> that's not going to work. Okay, so then let me do it this way. We'll fold it in. Oops. Got part of it off. And we'll fold it back over on itself so it doesn't hurt anybody. And squeeze it down. I don't know if you can see this if I'm still in camera. Yeah. But it's there we go. Okay. Then for that. Uh, let's see. Um, we'll just use a piece of paper behind it just to give it a little bit of, um, if it goes on this side anyway. Whoops, stay there. Because really, the sky is the limit when you want to decorate. It really is. Um, you're only limited by your own imagination. And that's it. If you don't know, you if you don't try, you'll never know. If you never know, you'll never try. That makes a whole lot of sense, but, you know, hey. There's my glue gun right on top. And I'm going to set this right there. Ooh, that metal gets hot. There we go. I know why. Okay. So, when that dries, you have something that's a little different, you know, or you can take a, I don't know, a white marker, a white Sharpie, or a white paint marker, and just, oh, that's the one I used yesterday, so that one's probably defunct. Let me try the brown. I don't know if it'll show up. But just put like a dot, just something to give it a little bit of character. The dot probably looks better than the black wood because, you know, there we go. And there's one. And here's some. These are still a little wet. And I know this glitter glue. There's one thing I noticed about the Studio G glitter glue that I don't have a problem with. The, the Nouveau Crystal Drops or, or even Stickles. The Studio G glitter glue takes forever to dry. Oh, fooey, here comes the train, so I'm going to pause you for a minute because we live right next to the tracks. Oops, here it comes. Hold on. Okay, we're back. <clears throat> There's a power plant probably about three miles from us at the end of 
the track on this side. So they're up and down this track probably every 30 minutes to an hour and sometimes more, sometimes less. So we get them all day long. Um, there's another technique I wanted to show you. Some people, and this is the only one I have, so I can't say I'm used to this. Um, the distressed stains from Tim Holtz. Okay, a ranger. This one's blue jeans. This is the only one I've ever found at Tuesday mornings. So that's uh, the only one I've got. But if you like the, you know, the distressed wooden look, uh, let's see if we can accomplish that with this. Wow, it's not soaking in very well. Might have to do a couple coats, but even that looks kind of cool. Yeah, it's starting to soak in. It gives you almost that aged painted barn look. Please tell me I said painted barn and not painted parn. My dad has a habit, and he used to confuse the grandkids so bad. His thing is he likes to flip flop the words, you know, like instead of um, apple jacks, he'd say japalax. And, you know, sometimes he just does because he's a weirdo like that. But, um, that now that's kind of cool. Did you see that? Look at that. Now, that'll probably fade a little bit as, um, the ink soaks in, but we can always do another coat. But that looks really good. It looks a lot better than I thought it would. And so, like, he'll even do it sometimes not knowing he'll do it because he's done it s so much. So he was talking to my grandson the other day, um, my 13 year old grandson, Jacob. And he was good. They were like teasing each other back and forth, you know. And he was trying to say, I'm going to box your jaws. Okay. But when it came out, he said, Jacob Tyler, I'm going to jock your balls. Now, coming from a preacher, that was pretty doggone funny, okay? It probably took us a good 15 minutes to stop laughing at that. And he was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe it came out that way. I said, you're the nut, you know? But yeah, that's what he did. So we're going to see how well this soaks in. And this is just that distress stain, okay? I would love to get a hold of some vintage photo or some walnut, some of that walnut stain, but I haven't found any. So that's what I'm, this is what I'm working with. And I'm good with that. I get to learn on, on things that I don't... You know, instead of wasting all my favorite things, I can practice on the things that, you know, may not be my favorite, but they're still pretty good. Ooh, I really do like this blue, though, on these, on these, um, uh, clothespins. That looks really sharp. Looks really deep. Okay, and let me see. Last thing... Okay, well, let's do it this way. See if I can find a couple buttons. Mm. Oh, now see, I have a green. Nah, that wouldn't look right. Okay, we'll do the other sides later. Okay, but this one's dry. And it may, well, it's still a little sticky. So we'll let that dry some more. And this, okay, look, it's still wet. I don't know if you can see that. 
you know, all the way down, it's still wet. That's the only thing that I do not like about the Studio G, the Studio G glitters is it does, it takes them forever to dry. You might as well work on it first and then leave it set overnight. That's probably why they're much cheaper than stickles. I was reading through this history while we're waiting for these to dry and I found out I don't know um, they crown king and queen right at the end of the festival and they crown the king Rex but the very famous one okay was get this was founded in 1872 that year listen to this the Grand Duke Alexis Romanov Alexandrovich brother to the heir apparent to the Russian throne, accepted an invitation to attend Mardi Gras festivities in New Orleans. Prominent city businessmen organized the visit as a way of attracting tourism and business to the city after the Civil War. Can you believe that? The heir, the Grand Duke Romanov. He was the one that was murdered and his family was murdered and... and the the daughter Anastasia there's been controversy that she escaped and was hidden in a mental institution or I don't know but um, the Romanov prophecies and the stories behind the Romanovs are very intriguing to me those and King Arthur and Camelot Knights of the Round Table things like that and Stonehenge. I actually did a paper on Stonehenge in college. Uh, okay, so let's see. How does that look? Does that look alright? Does that look kind of silly? I don't know. It's a little big. Don't, yeah, I don't think it matches. So let's just leave. I, I don't have very many um, buttons either. This is the extent of my button collection. That's it. And my brads. I got brads over here. There's brads and buttons. And that's it. But slowly but surely. And don't tell her I said that. No, I'm just kidding. Um, slowly but surely. I'm building up my stash. I'm building up my stash. And that makes me happy. Oh, you know what? Those are kind of pretty. Uh, I'll leave that alone. I don't have my little jar of gems, or I'd just put those on it. Um, let me see. We might be able to get away with something else. So let's see what we've got in here. <sighs> I don't know if those will match. Those would match better. I wonder if these would even fit. I don't know. And I think these are the last of my little heart ones, so we'll go ahead and use those up. I don't think I have any more. Nope. But that's okay. Oh, here's another thing. You guys ever get these in a like a scrapbook pack that comes with the stickers that you never know? what you're going to do with them and they always go to the bottom of the drawer I found some more brads okay well you can always use them These, oh no not that okay let me put that down here now you can always use these on uh, paper clips or whatever See, now the blue's dried. It's soaked in. It's got a really nice, 
even texture to it. What do you think? Maybe even, let's see. Would that look all right there? You think? Uh, maybe just a couple at the top. Let go. Let's see. It's anybody's guess. Anybody's guess. Now see, that doesn't look too bad. Except there's a hair stuck. I think Stacy cursed me with her hair. Her hair issues. Can't be mine. I always wear mine up in a clip. I don't think you'd ever know I had hair. Oh, great. Okay. There we go. How's that look? Simple. Just enough to know that someone took the time, just a few extra seconds it took to put this on here and make it a little bit more special. Now, these are dry. While I was waiting on the train to go by, um, I went ahead and took my heat gun and dried the gold paint because that was taking forever and this was already dry. We do the other sides, but I'll do that another time. Leave this off to the side. I don't think these will fit. The head's too fat, so we'll put her away. All right, now we we're gonna do paint green on this side with the gold. So. Let's flip these over, and we'll do we'll do a peridot. That seems to be my favorite green nowadays. Okay. That is a really pretty green one, don't you think? I'll do the sides when the top's dry. Whoops. So while I'm painting this, I guess I'll tell you a little bit about myself. Um, I was born and raised in a little town just outside of Detroit called Ferndale. Um, but we were, let's see, Detroit started at 8 mile in Woodward and we lived at 8 and a half mile in Woodward. So we were just a half mile outside the city limits. But the other side of my high school was in Detroit, and it's just one of those zoning things. No biggie. But, yeah, I grew up in Ferndale and Hazel Park. Those were my stomping grounds. Uh, let's see. I went to my first prom in a cast. Yep, my dinky butt was trying to piggyback my friend Sharon across the street because I was staying at her house the night before so she could help me get ready and uh, we were across the street babysitting during the day and uh, she didn't bring her shoes so I just told her to hop on and I'd give her a piggyback right across the street because that's where she lived and uh, I hit that bottom step and down we went so I ripped the muscles and stuff in my right ankle had to wear a cast 
but it didn't stop me. I still went to my prom. I think I danced more than my date did. But, you know, I look at life as, maybe I didn't when I was younger, but I do now. I look at life as if, you know, it can be gone at any minute. And it really, it can be. Uh-oh. No, don't paint the purple. Um, think about it. You know, all this crap with North Korea and them threatening us with a nuclear bomb and, you know, the crap with Iran and, and uh, Russia over in Syria. It's a scary time. It's a scary, scary time to be alive in this world right now. We've got terrorist attacks everywhere. And I just, I wonder. You know, as much as having children in this world is such a beautiful thing. I would be so afraid to raise a child during this time. I'm glad my youngest is, let's see, he was born in 91, so he'll be 27 this year. Um, I don't know if I could go through with having another one. I mean, I couldn't anyways, because after he was born, I had a hysterectomy, but, you know, just thinking about the thought. You know, it's just, it's, it's really scary. And there are so many evil people out there that prey on the young and the weak and the defenseless. And it's so wrong. It is. It's just so totally wrong. And some people may not like, you know, talking about some of this stuff. But like I said, I grew up. I didn't grow up with my head in the sand, put it that way. Um, I grew up knowing way more than I wanted to. And experiencing way more than I should have. As a child. But I think it made me a better parent. At least I tried to be. You know, I tried to be a proactive parent instead of a reactive parent. You know, where I tried to nip it in the bud before I'm reacting to whatever's going on. You know, like I forgot, I left my daughter. Or my daughter, I didn't leave my daughter. Um, my daughter asked me if she could stay the night at her girlfriend's house one Friday night after... Um, you know, after school because they were going to celebrate their birthday. And I said, yeah, that's not a problem. Okay, and then she asked me like on a Tuesday or a Wednesday. She didn't remind me, which is not her fault. Okay, totally my fault. It totally slipped my mind. So by the time 3, 30, 4 o'clock rolls around and she's supposed to be getting off the bus. Now we're, we're here in Missouri now, okay. Um, we weren't still in Detroit because if we had been in Detroit. I would have, I would have started blowing up houses. Okay, but you can't get that mentality out of your head. It's like you're always sleeping with your eyes open. All oh, that flipped over. How oh, good gracious! Um, you're always. <clears throat> My dad said it probably the best. He said when he moved down here, it took him about two years to finally exhale, you know, because you're always living in a constant state of anxiety when you're growing up. So, you know, just growing up in that era, imagine what the kids are going through, you know, in Syria, in Pakistan, in Palestine, in Iraq, you know, in Africa, you know, just imagine what they're going through. And I look at what we went through and where we lived, and oh my gosh, it was kindergarten, you know? So you always have to think that, yes, it can get worse. And yes, 
somebody definitely has it worse than you do, even though it may not feel like it at the time. But at the same time, you know, you just have to keep plugging along and pray and hope that one day things will get better. In my honest opinion, they won't. I'm not a naysayer. I'm not a, you know, a, a dopey dog either. Okay, it's just my beliefs that there are some things in this world that are happening that are the catalyst to something else happening. And if we don't, well, I'm just going to say this because this is my channel. And, you know, I don't want to offend anybody, but this is my honest belief. If we don't put God back in schools, if we don't put him back in our government, if we don't put him back, you know, at the head of the household again, he's, I think he's finally just going to get fed up with us and say, all right, fine. I warned you, warned you, warned you. Now... I'm taking my hedge of protection around you because you have to admit America's been been very blessed since its inception you know we haven't had any major major wars you know like World War One or World War Two, Vietnam Korea anything like that I mean we had the French Revolution no the Spanish American War, and then we had the Civil War, I think, or War of Independence. Um, but we've been exponentially blessed. And I believe that was because God was, we, we had God at the head, you know. We take God out of the schools, now look what's happening to our children. They're being shot, you know. Look what happens to innocent bystanders who just stand up and say, no, this is wrong. They get thrown in jail. You can't say certain words anymore online, on the phone. Sometimes I even worry about saying them in the house without, you know, NSA breaking your door down. Um, I don't know. It's just, it's... It's become a scary world. And the only way that I can get through it with as much as I've seen and watched and heard and experienced is through humor. And it may not be appropriate at times. It may not be what somebody appreciates because I really do have a goofball humor and you can thank my dad for that because that all came from him but yeah but see now I got my Mardi Gras um what do you call these things closed bins <laughs> done as soon as they dry anyway I'm thinking about putting some uh, purple ribbon some purple golden green you know maybe fibers or something on them and give them a little bit of flair and finesse and this side I'm not gonna paint with paint with the I'm just gonna go ahead and paint these gold Plus, it's what I got left. <sighs> Oops. I think that was a little bit too much. Just for four more of these. But I'm sure once I take them off, I'll find places that I missed and, you know... Like all the ends and the insides and everything else. 
Nobody's perfect. So let's see if we can do this side of this one. Oh, that looks really pretty up against that champagne. Yeah, I'll show you here in just a second as soon as I finish this. Okay. You see that on the side, that golden champagne? Oh! Well, fooey. I guess we'll just let you dry that away. And it showed me where I missed a spot with the champagne. So, like I said, doing it this way, you're not going to get it all right at the same time. I mean, obviously, you're going to have to do some touch-ups. But for the most part, you know, all of this can be pretty much done on the card. And that way they don't stick together. So. But with... Okay, now these were just clothes pins. There was another one I was going to show you. I don't want to make this video too long. I'm kind of tired. got these great big paper clips at Tuesday mornings. I got some black ones and some bronze colored ones or copper ones. All right. I love these things. It's got paint on them on this one because I was using it as a texture item on one of my jelly plate <laughs> jelly plate projects. Say that one 10 times fast. Jelly plate products projects. See, I still still messed it up. But, let's see, let's put that aside for a minute. And on the back half of this one, let's put some border. See how that works. Get us a little, excuse me, a little bit of glue. Come on. Okay, will that come out now? Oh. Oh, yeah, that came out. <laughs> that came out quite a bit, didn't it? Alrighty. So, let's just spread it down. Never trust the sticky of a sticker. Or washi tape. When that dries, we'll trim that up, trim the end up, finish. I would only probably don't, don't even have to finish painting it. Oops. No big grief. Okay. We'll let that one dry now. Now my next giveaway uh, is going to be when I reach 500 subbies, okay? Uh, so let your friends know. 
I'm sending out the first and second place prizes for the winners of my 300 subby giveaway um, at the end of this week. Um, let's see. And as the subbies get higher, the project or the prizes will get exponentially bigger. You know, so like the first and well, if you watch my 300 subby video, you'll know. You'll know what they get. And I threw a couple of extras in, but unless they're watching, they don't know that yet. See, this green glitter glue is still wet. Look at wait, look at that wrong way. It's still wet, and it's been an hour. It's been an hour. Let's just put this one right here. Oh, that'll work. Okay. Ready? So we'll put that down. There we go. We'll let that dry. There's just so many different things. You can take about five or six different fibers, you know, eyelash trim or, well, we'll just leave it sideways, um, strips of uh, scarves, pieces of terry cloth, anything, and just knot them up around here and let them hang. Actually, it would be this side that you would do that on because this is the side that goes over the paper. So, for instance, um, okay, let me, I will be right back. I'm going to go get some stuff to show you. Okay, I'm back. Um, just one final thing before I close up for the night. I was going to show you, oops, <laughs> about how to do the paperclip thing. And it's, like I said, I'm probably not telling you anything you don't already know. But it was something that I thought, hmm, might be a fun video, okay? So I've just got a scrap of ribbon that was tied around a gift or something. And so I'll, I'll cut it about yay long, okay? Here's some, see, it's been stapled. Okay, I'm out of my staple remover here and I, my fingernails, I'm not messing them up, so. Let's see, we've got some eyelash trim. I got this at the Goodwill for a dollar. This whole fuzzy roll. I was so excited. And I don't know where it starts, but you know, hey. All I need is a piece, right? There it is. Do we do one? We'll do two. Let me throw that down there. And some yarn. This came in a, a packet of uh, fibers I got at the do, uh, at the Goodwill. All right, where are you? There you are. Okay. So we'll do one. Two. And I don't know where my other one went, or I'd use that one too. So let's just use this one. We'll use this one again. Okay. Now, usually you wouldn't put this many on, but because it's a pretty big paper clip, I would think that, you know, it might be something that <clears throat> needs a little bit of extra. So all I'm doing is I'm folding these into a little bitty roll in the center to make it easier. So I'm folding it in half. You see that? I'm just sliding it through, turning it, and putting my finger there to keep that hole on this side. And then I'm going to reach through, and I'm going to pull these all the way through the hole and knot them. Just pull it tight. Okay? 
and since we're going to do this with two, I'm going to do the same thing. <clears throat> now obviously you can add more colors. These were just the first things I was able to get a hold of. So I'll turn that, fold it in half, stick it through, put my fingers in there so I can grab what this is and pull it all the way through. There we go. So now we've got a little bit and that's kind of probably more than you would want on a single paper clip. So you could just trim it See, I know that I don't want that high. That. Let's see. And by all means, don't throw away your trimmings because they make great uh, texture on ATCs, artist trading cards, and things like that. So, and there you go. Yeah, I don't like that one that high. Or that one. But see, that was just another way where you can make your own. Now, usually what I do when I do paper clips like this is when you pull them through, okay, do you see that little like triangle thing right there where the paper clip meets the cord or binding or whatever it is you're using, okay? Um, I don't have my fabric hack out, so what I do is I put a little drop of glue right there and a little drop of glue right there just just a little bit and I let it dry it's not gluing it to the paper clip it's gluing it to itself so it won't come loose and there we go you can do this with so many things so many different ideas and just it's a lot of fun. You can even hang chunky charms or something from them. That one wants to be a stinker so I'm going to stick him down there too. But that's my project share for today. And I hope everybody is happy, healthy, and staying out of trouble. Um, remember humor in life because it's really, really boring if you don't. Um, and um, God bless. I'll see you again soon. Oh, one more thing. If you like my video, don't forget. Thumbs up, please. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. And if you want notification that I'm uploading a video or I've already done a video, click the little bell next to the subscribe button. Okay, and share, share, share. Um, with YouTube changing everything, a lot of people need help. And, uh, you know, there are smaller channels, even than mine, that are struggling. So just share, 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 you know, um, and stay happy. Find laughter any way you can. All right. Thank you. And I'll see you guys later.